Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of these reference images. Don't need them anymore. And then I'm going to select the can and jump into the UV editing menu. So I'm just going to zoom in here and uh, add in a few seams. The first one I'm going to add is at the top here. Uh, right about at the point where I think the label is going to end. And I'm going to do the same at the bottom. Then to make the seams on the object, I'm just going to uh, right click and then go down to mark seam. Then I'm just going to do the same with the center line here. We need a middle cut in order to unfold this object. If we don't have this cut here, the object's not going to be able to unfold all the way. So I'm going to mark the seam here. And then I'm going to hit A. And then go up to UV and unwrap so you can see this has given us a decent unwrap but unfortunately the label area is a little bit wonky and uh, this can happen sometimes but there's a pretty easy way to fix it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump back onto my model and i'm going to select a face and then unwrap just that face so i'm going to go uv and then unwrap then i'm going to jump back in and i'm going to select the entire shell see i can select it here then I'm going to hit U and then follow active quads. Then I'm just going to pack these shells uh, neatly here for later. We are going to mess with these again, so it doesn't really matter where you put them. So now I'm going to jump into the shading menu and apply a material to our can. So I'm just going to hit new and then give this a name, uh, can underscore MTL. Let's uh, add a new node, the image texture node. There it is, and I'm going to connect that up to the base color. And one more node here is the texture coordinates node. This is just so we can make sure that our shader is connected up to our UVs, like so. And then I'm going to open this up here and add in the Coke label. So you can see that it's now on our mesh, but unfortunately the label isn't sitting in the right place, so we're going to have to do some rejigging of our UVs. So I'm going to jump back into the UV editing menu and select our shell, which will be our label here. And I'm just going to move it and scale it until it's sitting in the right place. You can see here I'm just moving it until I can get it just about, just so it's inside the edges. I don't want any of that blackness there. And after we've done that, we can see this label is sitting properly on the outside of our can. So that's looking pretty good. So let's start messing with the shader now. I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to change the metallic and put that all the way up to the top. And then I'm going to go down to the roughness and just bring that down until I get the look that I'm going for. You can adjust it how you like, uh, depending on how shiny you want it to be. But uh, I'm liking something like this. Now I'm going to just add a simple node setup to break up the roughness. So I'm going to add a noise texture and I'm going to connect that up to the roughness here. And you can see that's having an immediate effect, it's sort of giving it a cold condensated look. And I'm just going to mess with the noise texture settings until I get a look that I'm comfortable with. You can adjust this however you like, uh, depending on how your scene is. I'm just adding a curves adjustment here to mess with it a bit more. This is just to fine tune my adjustments to get the exact look that I'm going for. And I think that's pretty good right there. So the next stage of this is to fix the top and the bottom of the can. As you can see, they're both black. So we're going to have to add in a new shader here. So I'm going to add in a mix shader node. Put that there. Now I'm going to make sure that this input is on the bottom. Then I'm going to add a image texture node. And hit open there and go and add in this Coke label alpha. This is just so we can define where the label is and where we're going to have this other shader that we're putting there now. So I'm gonna add a new principled BSDF and I'm gonna connect that up to the other input on the mix shader node. And you'll be able to see pretty quickly that now the top and the bottom of the can have that new shader connected up to them. So now I'm just going to mess with the settings again, uh, messing with metallic and roughness until I get a look that I think works for the top and bottom of the can. I'm using the same noise texture on the roughness for this shader as well. And that works pretty good, just inputting that in there. 
So now let's navigate to the top of the can because we need to do the lid. Just going to add a new material and do the exact same thing. I'm going to call this one metal, MTL. And then I'm going to mess again with the metallic and roughness until I like the look for the top of the can. Making sure that it matches, of course, with the edges so we don't have clearly two different shaders going on. But you do have a little bit of leeway here. See, now I'm applying it to the tab and the tab nail. Then I'm just going to add another noise texture in order to break up that roughness a little bit. So now that we've done this, we have finished the shading on the can and all that's left to do is to add the water droplets. So to add the water droplets, the first thing I'm going to do is add a meta ball. A meta ball is an object in Blender that if you add multiple of them, they will sort of blend into each other. You'll see that further on in the video. Now I'm just going to do some scale adjustments to this droplet, making sure it's a bit smaller, and then I'm going to flatten it, just so it gets that sort of water look, because we don't want a full sphere sitting on the side of our can. I'm going to give this a name, I'm going to call it Droplet, and now we are free to add this into a particle system. So let's do just that, make sure you're on the Particle Properties tab, and then add in a new particle system. I'm going to call this one Large Droplets. Then we're going to set it to hair and make sure this advanced checkbox is checked. I'm going to bring the number of particles down to maybe something closer to 300. We may mess with this later. It's really sort of up to you how many you have. I'm going to drop down this menu here and I'm going to make sure I check use modifier stack. Without that, the particles are only going to exist on the top and the bottom of the model. So I'm going to scroll down here and change this over to object and then set that object to droplet. And you can see now we're getting some of those particles appearing on the side of the mesh here. I'm going to mess around with the scaling and the scale randomness. So you can see here if I look around that these objects are now appearing on the side and they are merging into each other. They look a bit strange so I'm going to check the object rotation. Then just play with the scaling one more time. I'm going to mess around with the scale randomness as well to add some variation. But that's looking pretty good to me. Now as you can see some of these droplets look a little bit low res and to change the resolution of metaballs I'm going to jump down to the metaballs properties tab. And, and uh, you can see here we've got the resolution viewport and the render resolution. So I'm just going to change those over to something a bit smaller. Try not to go overboard because this can easily crash your system. So now I'm just going to go and add another particle system called small droplets and do the exact same process that we did before. I'm going to go through and check all the same boxes. As you can see here, I'm just going to speed right through it. Except in this case, I'm just going to keep those particles smaller and more numerous. So I'm going to add many more of them, but keep them much smaller. They will still merge in with the larger ones. I'm going to mess around with the particle face setting in order to break them up and not get that grid look that was there before. So this is the point where I would encourage you to have a play. Just jump into the settings and mess around with the amounts and the amount of variance in order to get some different looks and just play around with uh, adding more condensation, less condensation, whatever look you're going for. There's really a million different options. So now I just want to fix a problem that I can see near the rim of the can, uh, which is the larger droplets kind of sitting out from the top. And I found a kind of quick and dirty solution to this. It's a little bit strange, but the way I do it is by selecting the can, jumping to particle edit, and then actually using the comb tools in order to bring this down. So I'm gonna grab the length tool and make sure that it's set to shrink. And I'm just gonna shrink down the particles that are coming out of those areas of the can. You can see me here shrinking those down. So I'm gonna do that for the top. And you can see there the particles are a bit smaller and I'm also going to do it for the bottom, just shrinking those down. And if we jump back to the can, now we can see we don't have those droplets that are poking out the side. What we did there was shrink down the hairs, so therefore shrinking down the particles in that area. And last thing I'm going to do is just add in the particle systems to the lid of the can, the tab, and also the nail tab. 
So you can see that I've added them to all these objects up here. And once you're done with that, you've now added the droplets to the entirety if you can. And we can add a shader to this. So the shader setup for the droplets is very simple. I'm just going to uh, add in a new material and change this to water droplet. Get rid of that pencilled BSDF. And then I'm going to add in the glass BSDF shader. Now this does a really great job at sort of faking a water look, uh, but we're gonna to wanna to do a couple of things just to complete it. I like to add in a mix shader node. Pop that in there. We're gonna open up our search again and add in a transparent BSDF. So now we've got all the nodes to create this shader. I'm just going to jump back into that glass shader and change the IOR to 1.33 to simulate more of a water refraction. Pop that into the top of the mix shader, pop the transparent into the bottom, and then I'm going to connect this one up to the surface here. And that's it, that's the entire shader for the droplets. Just a quick disclaimer, if this is not working very well for you using the metaballs, as your, if your system is crashing, if it's slowing down, I'd recommend just using regular geometry. The trade-off will be that you won't get that blending effect that the metaballs have, but it will run much, much faster on your system. If you do get towards the end, but you're struggling to render because of the metaballs, I'd recommend converting the metaballs into geometry before rendering. That's just a quick disclaimer if you are having issues in that area. So now you've basically done it. You've created the can, it has its material and shader. You've also created the water droplets that has its shader on top of it. And you can use this asset in any way that you like. You can use it product visualizations, you can use it in uh, animations, uh, whatever you like. Uh, I like to use HDRIs. If I do have any tips to make this can look better in a render, uh, make sure you have it something for it to reflect if you just have it in a void it's going to little, look a little bit flat so I like to use these HDRIs here like I'm inputting right now and you can see I'm looking around this and it looks a bit more real now but if you do want to go for a purely lighting setup I'd recommend using lots of lights just lots of things for the can to reflect it is a metallic object and that will make it look a bit better uh, but I do like this flat look that the HDRIs give and you can zoom in and see here that we've got our water droplets that are together. If they look a little bit low res, don't worry about it. It's uh, just because we are got that lower resolution for the meta balls in our viewport. But once we hit render, the all of that should even out. Thank you so much for following along with this series. It's been fun to make and I'm hopefully going to be releasing Blender tutorials every week. So if you need suggestions for what you would like me to make, just pop that down into the comments. And if you would like to see more of this kind of stuff, uh, just hit that subscribe button and I'll see you around here more soon.